going on YouTube? My name is Jacob. Welcome to 911%, the channel where I bring you guys along on my many random adventures with my Porsche 911s. This 1997 Carrera 4S and this 2011 Carrera 4S that my friend's driving here next to us. post videos on a regular basis everything from driving to events even a few technically oriented videos as well so if that's something that interests you hit that subscribe button and follow along on a regular basis today is the video you guys all have been asking me for a comparison between this C4S and the 2011 uh, which should be a lot of fun so let's do it So before I start, I just wanna say that I love both of these cars very much, so it'll be hard to be overly critical, but I'll try to be as subjective as possible, give you guys the goods. <laughs> So a little backstory, I've owned this, flipping the camera here, but I've owned this 993 for the last eight years or so. It's been a dream come true. This is my first 911. It's always been a pleasure car for me, not a full on garage queen per se, but you know, still like a Saturday and Sunday morning toy car. And over here, this is the 9972, the 2011 Carrera 4S that I've just recently picked up. I've owned it now for just shy three months and it's officially my daily driver. Its purpose is strictly transportation, such as a school bus, a grocery getter, a commuter train, and soon to be snowmobile. So super excited about it. Yeah, just really excited to be up here north of the city with these cars and these twisty roads. This is my favorite stretch of road, and I feel like I can definitely give you guys opinion on how these cars drive and the dynamics and all that kind of stuff that everybody's been asking me about. So without further ado, let's jump in and start with the 993 first. It's really an event when you get behind the wheel of a 993, I think, because it's such a visceral feel and it's such a, a play on your emotions that it's just, it's awesome, you know. With the purchase of the other car, I've really been neglecting this one, to be honest with you guys. It's been sitting in the garage on the tender pretty much all the time as I really enjoy that 997. But now, you know, on this day where I've got both of the cars out, it's just amazing to be behind the wheel. It's just uh, super comfy, you know, super familiar as well. I've been rev matching, I've been heel towing, even though I haven't really driven the car in a couple months. So, you know, it's just awesome. <laughs> So another thing to talk about is the power. So this car from the factory had 289 horsepower. Daily driver's got 385, so it's 100, 100 horsepower more. I'd be lying to you if I told you that you can't really feel it. However, what's amazing about the 993 is the way it's geared, the car can keep up. So the six-speed transmission, it is a very tight, it's very precise. I love, you know, the mechanical clicks and the way the shifters laid out. Now I've done a bit of modification to this car, specifically to the transmission. I've, I'm running a lightened flywheel. I've got an RS clutch in here as well. And I've recently placed the rear transmission mount with a almost solid mount from FD Motorsports. I gotta tell you guys, I mean, it's a very raw feeling car. Sometimes I feel like it might be too much, but uh, again, because it's a pleasure car, you know, it just kind of comes with the territory. It'd be lame if the car was numb and it was a fun car to drive. The, the six speed is, is absolutely amazing. There is a different gearing ratio that you could have picked up in Europe that uh, solves a bit of the issue of, of driving around town. I feel like I'm always stuck in second gear and it's either too much or too little gear. So apparently those Euro boxes really fix that. There's no 
question about it, the 993 has gobs of old school charm. You know, everything from the way it's built and constructed to the way it handles, to the way it drives. And, you know, I think that's why they're so popular today and that's why people are drawn to the air-cooled cars, specifically the 993. Not only, obviously, the, the beautiful exterior and the way they're designed, which I'll get to in a second, but they are cars that are just so raw and so fun. They become an extension of you. They're just a riot, you know? Of course, the look is so timeless. I still think the 993 was the coolest design out of all the uh, 911 generations. It's the sleekest, it has the best stance, I think. It, it really does it for me. And I know that's a super subjective thing. So, you know, to some people, other models are, and that's cool too. Yeah, I mean, just a, just a little feedback. I think this car, this car's design is timeless and what a cool object, you know. I've always, always been drawn to the hips, specifically on this wide body car. And as I hit these twisties here, I also have to keep in mind that even though, you know, my tires are pretty rad, this is still a vintage 911, so I've got to respect the old school. It's still a, a ton of weight over the rear wheels. And even though I've got a little bit of extra grip from the four wheel drive, the car still has dynamics of a 911. I find that, you know, it's so engaging that even creating these videos for you guys is tough sometimes because I want to keep yapping about it. But at the same time, I want to concentrate on the road and just be a super alert and attentive to what's going on in front of me. It's going to be interesting to drive the same strip with the 9972 to compare it. The road opens up a little bit here so I can put it in fifth gear and kind of chill. That's basically that. So I mean, once again, just to recap, you know, the visceral feel and the rawness of this car is really the charm. And I think this is what people really love about the air-cooled and what's different about the car that's that's driving behind us. And I'll get into that when I'm reviewing the 997, but the rawness, the power is less, but you know, it's still super fun to drive. The gearing of the six speed and the silky smooth gates. This is all, this is sensory overload. Driving this car, you know, you can feel the road, you can feel the pebbles. It's not much sound deadening. This is why I'm yelling at you guys. I miss it. It's a, it's a, it's a cool little car. I can open this up a little bit now. All right, so right off the bat, the biggest difference when getting behind the wheel of the 9972 is the power, the responsiveness. This thing's an absolute monster. Also, you know, it's almost too good. Because it's so forgiving, it makes you and it taunts you to be a little bit crazier with it and, and push its limits. And I think that's when things start going bad. So the biggest, biggest, biggest difference when comparing the two cars to buy them, for example, if you are interested in gobs of power down low and up above, you know, this car is a far better buy, I think, if that's all that you care about. But you know, there's a definite trade-off with that because you start trusting the machine more than yourself. Whereas with the other car, when you drive it, you're really at your own limits. You are the extension of the car. All right, so we've got a, a bit of a downpour here. So bear with the noise, because it's crazy, crazy, but proof that these 911s do not melt in the rain. They're just gonna get a little bit dirty, and that's fine. Let's get out of the uh, rain here. All right, so the rain is over. Back to the review. So this has a PDK, a seven speed, first generation PDK gearbox. I know that there's a lot of uh, reviews out there that criticize this gearbox to be a little bit lethargic and slow. And I guess, yes, if you compare it to the 991 boxes, 
you know, the, the shifts seemed to be a lot more quick. But in Sport Plus or in Sport, I think that this equally bangs through the gears and is lightning fast. You know, I definitely agree when putting this into drive or in manual mode and regular mode, it does have a little bit of a delay when you're switching gears, but it is still a fantastic box in that it's engaging. It allows you to, you know, drive in manual. I pretty much on a daily basis drive this car in manual mode with sport on. I just love how it behaves and how engaging it is. Another thing I wanted to say about the PDK transmission is that these cars really need this sport design steering wheel with the two paddles. I think that if you get the multifunction steering wheel, uh, you get the buttons for the PDK and it, the engagement is just nowhere the same as this. It's a lot less fun to drive. So, so if you do find a car that's like perfect spec for you and you know it doesn't have that steering wheel, do put that on a mod list. You can retrofit even newer steering wheels into this car but anything that has the minus and the plus paddles I think is the only way to really enjoy this transmission. It took me a good I would not say month of driving on a daily basis this 997 to really get used to the PDK transmission see where the power band is where the usable power is within each gear. PDK transmission is awesome don't let anybody tell you that it's not. It's still a very engaging drive, and actually, to give you guys a bit of a rundown, and I wanted to save this for another video, but the reason why I specifically was interested in driving a 997 on a daily basis was because this is, you know, just like the 993 is the last of the air-cooled, kind of the last of that vintage era of cars, I feel like the 997 here is, is the last modern day analog car if you get into the 991s a lot of this stuff becomes numb and and it's it's actually another dramatic difference in the way the cars feel just like comparing for you guys right now the 993 is so much more analog than this car and i feel like that contrast is very similar with the one generation between the 9972 and the 991. The car is still a lot of fun. Also the sound, which I actually cannot wait to do a, a Shark Works cross pipe and a Fister exhaust. I, I think that's on the list because that's another big difference is sound. The 993, you know, with the windows down, you can hear that air cooler growling behind you. Whereas with this, it's a little bit more subdued. Sounds a little bit like a sewing machine, to be honest with you guys. You know, there isn't really uh, that much sound. Like in the 993, if I did that, it'd be like Bruh! So at the sacrifice of rawness, you know, this car gets big points for comfort. I think in comparison between the two cars, obviously, you know, this is a far more civil, civil situation. As you guys can see, I'm not yelling at you when I'm talking to you uh, in the other car. You know, everything's so mechanical and raw, whereas with this, you know, with, with, besides that little hum of exhaust, it's, uh, you know, it, it's pretty civil in here. I just gotta hit it here. But the car's fantastic to drive, you know, even though I went to work with it all week. Now on the weekend I can hit these roads and, you know, still enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I really love it and uh, highly recommend it for you guys. But yeah, and then I mean, at the end of the day, you can always put this thing back into normal, into D, and it just becomes a little granny, granny car, a little Tercel that you wanna take to the store. It's just a little, a little puppy dog. So that's basically the comparison. You know, I think the biggest takeaway from this is that obviously the older car, just because of the era it's from, it's a lot more raw. It's slower, obviously, because the technology is just not there. And but it handles. You know, it's almost like they have their own little charms. That's basically it. So this is my 9972. It's comfy. It's savage. I mean, this is why I've been driving it because I feel like it's a situation where the car can put on a couple of different hats and uh, do everything well, you know? And that's what's awesome about it. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video with my little comparison here, the air cooler to the water pumper. Two completely different experiences and not one better than the other. I think they do things really well for what they're meant to do. And uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to hit that subscribe button and comment and like and all that stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Take care.